Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for mathematics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guides is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, YEC, GC, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Carbopedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, and NECO, ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class, okay? Let's get started. Before we go into detail about this bearing and distance, let us talk about our specific objective, what you are expected to know at the end of this lesson. Specific objectives. Number one, you will know the meaning of bearing, the types of bearing. Distance itself, now you begin to separate the two types of bearing we have. Let's take a look at this little video before we proceed to the definition of bearing, distance, and types of bearing. Let's learn the directions in north, south, east, and west. You can also see the next diagram with the color of the sky, the compass and GPS itself, in north, south, east, and west. The car you have, the very vehicle you are seeing is following a particular route and direction. Likewise, an aeroplane making use of what the bearing as directed to its route. Never eat saggy waffles. That is, if you don't want to forget, not east south. Okay. Let's go into the proper learning. Bearing is just an angular direction, an object follow in order to get to its destination. Just like an aeroplane, there is a targeted bearing or a measured bearing assigned to the destination where a particular aeroplane is going. Then distance is just the amount or the distance it covers. Distance is measured in kilometer, could be meter, depending on their desired units of measurement. Types of bearing. Who have the compass bearing called the cardinal point and the what? Three digit bearing. Talking about the compass bearing, we are trying to recall, recall the cardinal points. As the name implies, campus bearing or cardinal points bearing. Like you have seen rightly in the short video, which we watched before the explanation of this particular topic. Here is the north, south, and the west, east, west. Never eat saggy waffle. It depends on how you want to remember your own, but the starting point here is what? The north, the south, east, and west. Proper direction, 
an aeroplane can flow this way, the northeast or east of north, the southeast or east of south. Southwest or uh, west of south, the northwest or uh, west of north. Okay. There are some things we use to represent or calculate while we are trying to know the difference, the actual differences between the campus bearing and the three digits. We can interchange between the two. We can eat convert from campus back to three digit, three digit back to campus bearing. When you see something of this nature, 50 degree north east. This is a representation of what campus bearing. They're talking about three digit bearing, zero five zero degree. If you want to think about fifty degree, you will write zero five zero degree. That's zero fifty degree, not just fifty degree. Examples present the following as a campus bearing. We need to just draw. This is campus bearing. We want to convert the following three digit bearing to campus bearing. Zero three degree. That is zero thirty degree. Remember your cardinal point. Before you move on, bearing moves clockwise moment. While we are, when you are thinking about quadrant, we move anti-clockwise moment. So starting point here. This is thirty degree zero three zero this is not east when this 30 degree implies 30 degree not east or 30 degree east of not let's consider 150 degree I want to convert that one too 150 degree. Cardinal points. First quadrant. The movement starts from first quadrant. And 150 is towards second quadrant. That is this way. Meaning, you will take away 90 degree from 150. What angle will remain when we take it away? It will remain 60 degree. Each quadrant represents 90 degree. That is to say, 90 minus 60 here is 30 degree. So this 150 degree you are seeing the cardinal point or the campus nature of it is going to be 30 degree south east. So 120, 150 degree being a tragedy bearing has been converted to what? Campus bearing as what? 30 degree Southeast. 
we we'll have another one, 250 degree. I know some of you will be wondering as you're watching the video, why not solve direct? The foundation is very, very important so that when you begin to deal with your bearing, the calculation, the distance aspect of it, it's not going to be a case. Okay, now 250 degree. Two fifty degree. It's a three digit bearing converting to compass bearing the south as you know. This is west as you also know. Ask yourself this angle two hundred and fifty degree, which quadrant? It means third quadrant. It flows this way, one, two, three, but cannot be exactly 270 because 250 degree is not up to 270 degree. That is to say this is 90, this is 90. It means we are taking away 180 from 250. When we do that, it will remember what? 70 degree. Now, what is our solution? The conversion of 250 degree as a 3-digit bearing equals what? 70 degree south west. Reason, movement, this way. We are not going like this. The movement was this way. I know one will be wondering, what about when we converted 150 degree? Why the movement was the reverse? It's because of what you are talking about southeast and not east of south. You take your solution from the base. The final question there is 320 degree. Then 320 degree, fourth quadrant. That's as we see. This is 90, under 90 degree, under 90. That is 270. What are we going to add to 270 to make up 320? The answer is what 50 degree. Or you can say 320 degree minus 270 degree. It will give us what 50 degree. Now, what is our solution? Remember, we have not west and not west what not. Okay. Therefore, we are looking for this direction. Can you see the movement? I know we are actually moving this way, but there is solution. It's going to come from here. Because of what? We are interested in northwest and not west north. So 90 minus 50 will give us what? 40 degrees. So solution here is what? 40 degree northwest. This is all about the campus bearing. Let's consider the next type of bearing called the three digit bearing. Now we are going to convert the following compass bearing into three digit bearing. So three digit bearing. Before we start, the final solution we have here, let's convert it back to what? Three digit bearing okay that is 40 degree not west look at it see this is not west so 40 degree not west is here now if we want to get back our three digit bearing movement i told you is what clockwise movement 
So since it's clockwise moment, here, here is what? 50 degree. If here is 90, here is 90. So here is 90. 90 degree plus 90 degree plus 90 degree plus 50 degree. What do we have here? We're going to have 320 degree. And that is perfect. Now, let's convert 30 degree, not east. 30 degree, not east. Look at it. First quadrant. Just see? There is no stress in this one because it's the first quadrant, meaning 30 degree not east. So no much stress in this. The movement this way, not east, and that's what we have. Then 15 degree, not west. 15 degree, not west. Solution for this one is zero, three, 0, 30 degree. Why this? You go this way. Not west is here. Then 90 minus 15 will give us 75 degree. So our solution is going to be what? This movement. Watch this arrow. This is 90. This is 90. This is 90. And this is 75, meaning 270 degree plus 75 degree will give us what? 345 degree. Three digit bearing. We also have 50 degrees southeast and 55 degrees southwest. Southeast, let's represent it as, as a go because of our time. This is 50 degrees. Then here will be 40. The three digit bearing movement is from here, like this, meaning you stop here. This is 90. So, solution here now 50 degree southeast to three digit implies 90 plus 40 degree. This is what, 130 degree. Then 55 degree southwest, yeah? This is it, 55. I think this one is easy. See the movement. You pause. Here, nothing to subtract because it's, uh, the force is already striking the direction or the line that divides south west into two. So the solution here is so 180 degree plus 55 degree, meaning 235 degree is our solution. That is the solution for the southeast. Okay. Relationship between three digits and compounds bearing. That's exactly what we just finished doing. The relationship between them. We have exhausted it by converting from compounds bearing to what? Three digits. 
and from three digit bearing back to Kempan's bearing. So that's just the relationship between them, how they can interchange. At times you'll be surprised when you see 30 degrees south to west. Converting it to three digits, you'll be seeing a very big angle. So just try to understand it. Now, we are talking about the cosine and sine rule. Actually, I don't want to venture into solving problem on bearing without intro or taking you to the foundation you need to tackle problems with. So, talking about the cosine and the sine rule. In cosine rule, we have three formulas. That is a square equals b square plus c square minus 2bc cos capital A. If you're starting with b square, then b square equals a square plus c square minus 2ac cos capital B, which represents angle. Then c square itself is also equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab cos capital C. The minus sign you are seeing is the general formula, but there is a case as you solve. Because of nature of quadrant, this minus sign will not switch to what? Positive. In the same vein, we can create a cosine rule when no angle is given by using one of these formulas. Let's use the final one. Let's say c square. c square equals a square b plus b square minus this is. So our interest here is to get angle because we are talking about when there is no angle. If I transfer this this way, it means c square plus 2ab cos capital C will give us what? a square plus b square. Now subtracting c square from both sides, we have 2ab cos capital C equals a square plus b square minus c square. Now making cos c subject of the formula we warrant us to say multiplying both sides by the what? Multiplicative inverse of 2ab equals c. That's 2ab. That is divide through by 2ab. 2ab. This will take care of this. So that cos capital C, which is an angle equals what? a square plus b square minus c square all over 2ab. So this is the cosine rule, the formula for cosine rule. Watch it very well and take note of it because definitely when we start to solve, you are going to make use of this formula. Talking about the sine rule, in sine rule, given a triangle ABC, given triangle ABC, and if you have a device, this triangle this way to produce this D, this is small A here, small B, because this is divided into two, we are not interested in B, so let's create space for small C. Oh, this is very well. This is 90 degree. And the height of this triangle is called what? H. So this is to say, if I say opposite of our hypotenuse, H all over C equals to sine C. I can call it equation one. If I go the other way around by saying H all over A equals to sine capital A, I call it equation two. You will not believe with me that H is either C sine capital C 
A A sign capital A. Okay? Recall from AP or GP when you're talking about common ratio or common difference. If you have two common ratios or common difference, equating or pointing out to a particular thing, you should be able to know that D, which is common difference, they will equate each other. Now we are having a uniformity here by H equals this and H equals that. Also recall from your quadratic graph that when an equation is assigned to Y, that is Y equals S squared plus maybe another thing. Then um, a different equation is given to you as you proceed in answering questions in that graph. It means Y is this here and Y is also this here. So Y remains Y. It, they are going to equate each other. At this point, I want to let you know that small c sign capital C is going to be equated to who? small a sign capital A. Okay. When we do this, we now have that. Either I will let you know that A, all of us sign A, will give me C all over sign C. In nutshell, the proof is not too necessary just for you to know how it came about the sign rule. The sign rule. If you cross multiply, okay, here is a sign to be A, here is a sign to be C. H all over C, opposite of hypotenuse, plus H all over A, opposite all over hypotenuse. There is all over this equals sign A, okay? A sign A and C sign C. So, the summary of sign rule, just know that A all over sign A equals B all over sign B and equals C all over sign C. Okay, before we proceed to the next thing, which is still bearing, let me bring your attention close to one particular thing you should know. How do you know when to apply the cosine rule while solving your bearing and the sine rule while solving? Listen carefully as you're watching the video. Number one, when three sides of triangle are given without any single angle in it, it is what? Cosine rule. Look at what I mean. If you have a triangle this way, 4 meter, 5 meter, maybe 6 meter, automatically it is what? Cosine rule. And I know somebody will ask, what about Hero's formula? You use Hero's formula when you're talking about area of a triangle. I think that is very clear. Point two, when two sides of a triangle are given with one included angle which is not pointing to any of the distance given or the length given in that triangle, it is what cosine rule. For sine rule, the angle must face one of the lengths of the triangle. For instance, here, this is 60 degree, is facing this way. And when this happens, if this is facing here, 
and this is facing to no angle, it is who? Sine rho. And again, two angles may be given, or three, depend on what you're looking for, with one side of a triangle given. And one of the angles given in that triangle will be pointing to no length of the triangle. It is called what? Sine rho. Just like this, 60 degree is pointing to no length. Y50 degree is pointing to 6 meter. It is what? Sine rho. Having seen this and listened carefully, let's go over to another thing. the quadrant. Okay, quadrant helps us why we are applying the cosine rule. Because we use cosine rule mostly in bearing. Quadrant, I can draw a circle and divide it into four. Recall that Horizontal line and vertical line is just a representation of your line in graph. So that some of you will not be seeing it as a new thing or maybe a foreign strange diagram. No? If I remove this, I want to let you know the reason I'm drawing the circle. When I call it first chord, this is first. And here is what? Second. But we flow this way when we are dealing with quadrant alone because quadrant, our interest is to do what? To generate when a cosine, sine, or tan, though we are not using tan in bearing, when they are positive or negative. This is third. And here is what? Fourth. But in bearing, this is first, good. Here is what? Second. It's no longer the case. Instead of here, answering fourth quadrant in bearing, it is answering what? Second quadrant. Then third and first are permanent. Then the second will be answering fourth clockwise moment. Going anti-clockwise, duration, Flowing clockwise duration. Okay. Analysis. In first quadrant, both tan theta, cos theta, and sine theta, they are all positive. How? See your graph here. The horizontal line and the vertical line. If you flow this way, can you see the direction? I want to form my right angle triangle. Here I call it theta. This is the y axis. This is the x axis. This is z, called the hypotenuse. Wherever 90 degree is facing is permanently known as the what? The hypotenuse of that triangle. And wherever theta is facing automatically becomes what opposite. Why the remaining part will answer who? Adjacent. Take note. For tan theta, tan theta equals opposite all over adjacent. That is y all over x. Did you see any minus sign here? No. Therefore, tan theta is who? Positive. Likewise, cos theta equals adjacent all over hypotenuse. Did you see any minus sign here? No. Therefore, cos theta is who? Positive. I think you are getting the analysis. Finally, sin theta 
equals y all over z, that is opposite all over hypotenuse, and the minus sign, no, meaning sine theta is also positive. Therefore, tan theta, cos theta, and sine theta, they are all positive in the what? First quadrant. Hence, theta remain theta in first quadrant, provided the angle is not greater than 90 degree. That is, theta less than 0, less than 90 degree. This is an inequality symbol. This means, okay, theta, 0 degree, theta is greater than this, but it's less than 90 degree. Theta can be 10, 20, 30, they are all greater than 0. So, that is that for first quadrant. I venture into second quadrant. As the direction of second quadrant this way, draw it down, create a 90. This is minus s as is, and this is plus y as is, because it's still going up sine theta equals what? Opposite all of hypotenuse, that is why all of z is what? Positive. So our formula here is what? 180 degree minus theta. Meaning whatever that is the angle that is greater than 90 degree, before you make use of the angle, you must say 180 minus theta. Some of you, those of you that have witnessed a question in bearing, you can remember or recall that at times they will tell you find the bearing of this from this. Without this knowledge, you'll be solving whatever your mind is telling you. Okay. Cos theta equals adjacent minus S over hypotenuse. Provided there is a minus here, it means cos theta is not negative. And formula remains what? 180 degree minus theta. When I was introducing you to the formula of cosine rule, remember I said the formula is minus, but there is a case where that minus sign will not change. It depends if the theta you have is within the second quadrant. If it is within the second quadrant, automatically, cos theta is what? Minus. What do you do? This minus here. Compare it to the other one. That's a minus, minus in the formula. Automatically, it becomes what? Plus. So in that case, or in such a case, a square equals b square plus c square plus 2bc cos a. It's no longer going to be what? Minus 2bc. I think you are understanding what I'm trying to explain. I know you get it well when we start to solve bearing. Okay, that is that. Finally, for tan theta, tan theta equals opposite, opposite, all over adjacent, mean minus. And the formula there is what? 180 degree minus theta. So call it tan, call it sine, call it cosine. Second quadrant formula remains what? 180 degree minus theta. Time for third quadrant. I will only delete here and continue with the diagram. That's the one. So here now, my interest or our interest here should be flowing in this direction, making it a 90 degree. This is minus S, does not change. This side, what as this is this? Minus Y as this, meaning minus Y. This gentleman remains permanent, does not change. So sine theta equals minus y all over z. 
meaning sine theta is what? Negative. For third quadrant, formula is what? 180 degree plus theta. Or some people choose to say theta minus 180 degree. No problem. Two, uh, both of them will give you the same solution. I bet you, you will generate the same solution. How? If you are talking about 240 degree, now, 180 plus theta to interpret 240 implies, what am I going to add to 180 degree to produce 240? It means 180 plus what? 60. That is 240 degree. Now, using this, what is theta? 240, then 240 degree minus 180 degree equals what? 60. Check two of them. 60 degree, 60 degree. Meaning your theta at that point becomes what? 60 degree. Fourth. Okay. Cos theta. Let's solve for cos theta. And tan theta. They will now talk about the fourth quadrant. So cos theta equals minus minus x all over z provided you have seen an element of negative uh, minus sign automatically consider is what negative formula remains what 180 degree plus theta or theta minus 180 degree tan theta tan theta implies minus y all over minus s that is op opposite all over adjacent minus will cancel minus so remain y all over x meaning tan theta is who positive so it is only tan theta that is positive in third quadrant formula remains the same now the fourth quadrant the fourth quadrant Fourth quadrant goes this way. I draw. This is 90 degree sign. Still minus y. Or here is plus x. So cos theta equals adjacent all over hypotenuse. Meaning plus formula 360 degree minus theta. Sine theta equals minus y all over z that is opposite all over hypotenuse minus formula 360 degree minus theta tan theta equals minus y all over x this implies what negative formula remains 360 degree minus theta that is, it is only cos theta that is what positive in the fourth quadrant. However, the proof for quadrant has been completed. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the videos to people that will benefit from it. Bye.